Yeah, we will review uh, chapter uh, two. Uh, let me get my pen. Uh, chapter two uh, on power diodes, and um, this is for course EL 4242 power electronics. I would strongly recommend that you view the um, MathKit files, uh, the video for the MathKit files. Uh, you don't have to do anything. You will just run those uh, the files, you know, the program files. And the MathCAD from MathCAD software is available on that at the UWF desktop. There is a video how to use it. I would recommend strongly you recommend to do that uh, before you come here, you know, before you review this one. <coughs> and um, this is the one, is the reverse. It's very important to know some of the characteristics of a diode. <coughs> you might have, you know, you might have come out, you, I'm sure you have covered diodes in. <clears throat> the electronic circuit course, but that's something is very important. No, you are talking for doubt. If a doubt is conducting from an on state, and if a doubt is conducting on stain, and if there is a current flowing, say the forward current IF, now when you turn off this diode, um, the, it's a real doubt. You're looking at power doubt, you know, power, and it means that hundreds, could be thousands of amps, is getting that. And it's the same semiconductor device, but the once you start from that diode, at that time the voltage drop across the diode is normally small, very small when it's conducting that. But once it turns off, uh, it cannot turn off right away. There is a certain time it takes, depending on the how the current is flowing through that. Normally there will be inductor in a, in a circuit. If there is an inductor like this, the voltage, you know, the LDIDT of that current depends on the, 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 the voltage you have divided by L, it you know, depends on the inductor. Normally there will be inductor in the circuit and the inductor will limit the DIDT, how this current is falling, and limit the one. Now as a result, if it started from a current, current it was carrying as 100 amp, now the diode will be falling you know, at a certain slope, depending on the DIDT of the circuit. And then it fall like a T1 at a time, a T1, but it's supposed to doubt, it's supposed to be off, but real doubt, it will not be off because of the, 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 the reverse recovery time and, the, and, the, and the, the recovery of this recombination of the you know, electrons and holes within the device. It will continue to conduct for a while, and in the meantime, the diode is like ineffective. It's like, an, it's not, it's not, it's not, the, it allows you the current flow in the reverse direction, and then uh, there will be reverse current flowing through the diode, depending on where it started, what is the slope of that, how long the time is, there will be reverse recovery current, and suddenly the diode will turn off, you know, until it just take a turn off. Some of them could be abrupt, some of them could be uh, soft, you know, it depends on. Now then the current will slowly, slowly fall, okay? Now, <clears throat> now this is the voltage across the diode will be the end of this, the one voltage will be the small, and then suddenly it will go back to his reverse, and a reverse voltage standing capability. Now, this is the recovery charge of the diode, and there are time there. It's a slope of the time. Now, how much this will go for the maximum depend on the, the slope and where it started from. These are the factors that the multiple re reverse recovery time will depend on the where it started and the slope of the line and the slope of that, the volume, and so on and so on. There are some equations on this book. You can look through that. This is just to know that that reverse recovery time depends on that where it started and the slope of the line and uh, slope of the line how this falling there. Now this is the, the this is the one of the questions coming up. The reverse recovery time is caused due to what? Due to the minority carriers because the majority carriers is the one when the diode is conducting diode is conducting and that's the majority carrier. The minority carrier is the one causes that. The question asks for majority carriers, majority minority carriers is the, the majority minority carriers have causes that reverse recovery time. Reba, the, during the reverse recovery time of a diode, um, uh, the diode, the diode fall, current falls from on state to the off state. You know, it was on, it was getting a certain current and then the current will fall. The current will fall slowly, depending on the circuit, uh, what are the inductance you have, and then the diode will be when the current, um, the, the, it will allow you, the current diode will be ineffective or ineffective. It will allow current to flow in the other direction too. 
and then suddenly when it realizes that then uh, then it's not doubt and suddenly it will blip off. Uh, just to know the reverse recovery time of a doubt um, uh, during the time when the doubt falls from on state to the off state. This is the time. Peak reverse recovery time uh, of the doubt depends on what? Storage time, QRR, and the river DIDT, and both of them. It depends all of them. That this, the reverse recovery peak current depends on the this charge it has, which is the area under the curve, and also the DIDT of the, how the current is falling. Is the falling DIDT. <clears throat> the the higher the value of the uh, what it says the higher the value, the higher the value of the reverse DIDT. The, the the higher is the value of the peak reverse current. That means the current is falling faster. If the current is falling faster, you expect the peak recovery current will be larger. That means if it falls, the far far farther it falls, far farther, you expect the more and of sharper it falls, that the IRR or the reverse recovery current will be found. The higher the value of the peak in the peak peak recovery current of the doubt, the higher the value of DIT. That basically means that. Now often some doubts are connected in the parallel, uh, parallel so that, that one doubt may not be able to carry all the current. We are talking of maybe 2,000 and 5,000 amps, a large current. Now to, to make those um, the, the voltage sharing, the sharing the voltage, you got a diode D1 and diode D2. This voltage drop could be 0.7, could be 0.6. As a result, there will be difference in you know, uh, uh, the current, uh, and they may not share the same voltage to ensure that they share the same voltage in the reverse direction when it is not conducting. Then you use those uh, chi 1 as a, um, what do you call this, uh, connected in series. Um, so that the, the, the when it is off state, it shares the voltage. Like if you got a 10k here, if you got a 10k here, you know the voltage drop when the diode is off, then there will be a sharing equally. That's the idea, are connected often, the, the, the resistance across them when they want to share the voltage in opposite direction. And when it's a conducting, it will be conducting current, but it's the reverse direction is the problem. Like that, the resistance R1 and R2 as shown ensures equal sharing of the diode, ensures equal sharing the diode voltage, not the currents. Okay, that's the current just to make sure. You know. The parallel connected diodes, sometimes you connect the diodes in parallel. <coughs> But here the current come if this voltage drop is 0 0.7, 0 0.6 here, then you see that if you don't have anything there, wherever there is the lower potential, the current will try to go through them. And as a result, there will be difference there. That as a result, this will be you know, one resistance, this will be this will be higher than this D2 resistance. There will be imbalance and the most of the current will go through the other one. To share that, you put an R1 and R2 in in, 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 in series so that if this is a one ohms and then the other one is a one ohm, then you can see that there will be a uh, there will be difference will be less that you you are just this fellow around R2 so that you matches those one. Like this R1 and R2 in this particular case are used for sharing of the sharing, equal sharing of the currents. You see that there's the sharing of the voltage, this is the sharing of the currents. <clears throat> um, we will reverse some of that. If you put a diode in a circuit, it becomes a circuit, becomes nonlinear. And as you are familiar, we will consider a switch and a diode. Now, these two together is not a separate, you know, you can see it's two separate a switch and a diode. But a transistor or some other semiconductor devices, they, they will act like a switch. And then be, because of the characteristic of the devices, they will allow current in only one direction. That's why to allow a current flow in only one direction, diode is like a hypothetical diode and a switch there. Now, what do you expect that? If you close the switch there, if you apply a voltage across that one, the current will rise exponentially, as you know, is an exponential rise exponentially, and then this uh, the, the the capacitor voltage will rise exponentially. That's the current will fall and capacitor will rise. But what is important to know at the very fast moment, at the very the capacitor is fully discharged, very 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 fast moment. The capacitor has no charge because the capacitor voltage of a capacitor is equal to 1 over C IDT. 
that means that if the capacitor has no initial value of zero then at the very fast moment when you turn on the switch capacitor has no voltage and that means that there was the capacitor has no voltage that ohm's law the peak current will be vs divided by r that's what it is ps vs divided by r with the peak current as the capacitor charges you know because the capacitor is an integrator as it charges with time and the capacitor voltage will rise and this current will fall uh, that's what happened okay now there are something they said this one of the thing is to look for that the peak value of this the current is like vs by r and then also to look into that one the the steady state when that capacitor is fully charged you expect that to be vs you know, and going to fully charge a vs there and there is a one called the time constant is the rc of the circuit when uh, rc when that is, is called the time constant when that when that value the peak value become like a 63.7 percent something like that okay and that's the one to remember the time constant of the circuit we know that and the current will be rising the peak current there and also the voltage what is the, uh, the the beginning of the current is the maximum current and the end voltage what is that one okay now then we got like another card said we got switch RC circuit. When you have this circuit now, they ask you, the question asks you, when the switch is shown in closed, when you close the switch, the, the initial current, okay, initial current will be, you know, obviously the capacitor has no voltage, initial current will be Vs by R. That's the right answer, right? Because the capacitor has no voltage, the initial current at the, in the moment will be Vs by R, by Ohm's law, okay? Now, the, the, this is another current, the asking question, question, what is the dV by dt of that one? What is the dV by dt of that one? And then uh, the switch current, the initial dV by dt. Like if you look through the voltage of the capacitor is rising like that, what is the dV by dt? At the, at the, uh, it will be rising, you can say that it will be a, a time constant. Within the time constant, it's rising at a slope of a time constant. It will be basically Vs by the time constant. Okay, the, the time it goes there is the slope. It's basically the slope. What is the slope of that? The, uh, of this line is the V, and this is a T. Uh, v by T is a D by what is this? It's a basically slope of the line. Uh, we know that at tau, you know, at the tau is the time constant, and the basically that means that. The, 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 the initial dB by it would be Vs by RC, okay? And it also asks you other question, that, that should be the right one, the right answer. Now, switch the RC, again asking for you, the question, a, a, a circuit is R equal to 2, C equal to microfarad, the peak current, a peak current of the diode, it will be, uh, peak current will be, the peak current will be 100 amps, they ask you all of the Vs, you know, you can, you can calculate it out, you know, you know the capacitor, you know the R, the peak current will be 100, uh, what are that, the peak current will be 100, whatever that, you should be able to calculate it out, okay. I would suggest you to do those exercises, you know, get ready for this, the test, okay. And uh, you should be able to calculate. The other one asking is the R is time constant. The time constant of the diode circuit is obviously R and C. This is an R and C. R. You know that's R C is the time constant of the circuit. Although there are other questions to make you uh, like think about whatever it is. This R C is the time constant. Let us look at it. We are now looking at R L C circuit. The R L C circuit. What happened? Like uh, the inductor, the voltage across the inductor is equal to L D I D T. Okay, L D I D T. Now. The the uh, the current cannot rise instantaneously. Okay, the current cannot rise instantaneously. As a result, it has no current. Suddenly, the, there is a current coming from there. The inductor will oppose any um, changes of that. The inductor will changes uh, any changes of the current. As a result, there will be no current at the beginning. Because inductor will uh, slow, it. inductor will slow their current rise. At the very beginning, zero current. If there is zero current, there is a zero voltage across the resistance. That means what we expect: all the voltages will be appearing across the inductor. All the voltages will across the inductor. The inductor voltage will be the supply voltage, and the VR across the resistance will be small. That's what happened. Now slowly, the inductor current will rise. Inductor current will rise. What? Then you can say if the beginning L is equal to that and the res cap resistance has no current, that means all the voltages will appear across the inductor. 
that means the di dt the, the current will rise vs by um, vs by l and if you try to solve the i it will be vs by l times dt very 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 slowly at the beginning that means the slope of the line will be approximate at the beginning vs by l that means that's the true that the maximum uh, the voltage across the inductor will be very beginning will be vs and then slowly slowly the the inductor current rises and the voltage across the r increases the voltage across the inductor will be smaller and smaller at the end it will be uh, going to almost like a zero and the current will rise to the steady state what is the steady state when the inductor has no voltage because the inductor if there is no change in current there will be no uh, the voltage across the inductor that means that voltage across voltage across the inductor will be zero all the voltage will be across the resistance that's what it is you are going to have this the maximum current will be vs by r okay and similarly the time constant will be l by r this is you know, it's, it's basically a review of the circuit but we are making it the power action because the power action it deals with the, the energy transfer or energy transfer from one element to the another element by switching a, a, a using a switch and that makes the difference of that one like like this RLC circuit if you look to the RLC circuit uh, when that when the switch is closed once you close the switch the once to close the switch initial DIDT will be equal to what uh, the, the initial current uh, initial current is what when you close the switch uh, what will be the initial current initial current will be zero because the inductor current cannot rise immediately inductor will stop, stop rising the current that means initial current through this RLC circuit will be uh, zero what will happen to the end in the end current will be equal to uh, the Vs by R the beginning is zero at the end will be the, the uh, Vs by R okay that's the, the answer is the zero now again the switch RL circuit we are asking for what is this the, the slope of the current the slope of the current we mentioned to you the current mux of the current will appear across the most of the voltage will appear across the inductor L sorry L D I D T L D I D T equal to V S you know that means the D I D T will be equal to Vs by L. Just in general policy, as long as there is this inductor in the circuit, the rate of rise of current is always determined by the inductor there. That means Vs by L is the answer. If you got a diode like this circuit, you have a RL circuit, it asks you R equal to um, 2 and L equal to 2 minute peak diode current uh, will be when the switch is closed. You know, when the switch is closed, you can find out. The peak diode current will be 100 amps when the switch is closed. Once you clip the switch there, and when it will be there, of course, you can see that Vs by R should be equal to 100, and then you know it should be 100. Then you know how much you know the R equal to 2. You can find it out how much the Vs you will be or you need to do that. Okay, it's a simple answer. Now, how much energy stored? Once you have this at uh, the current. Once you have this, the switch is closed, and then you know the two and you know the L. Once the two is current, current is there, and you know that how much energy will close. The energy of an inductor is your half, half I L square, and the inductor, the energy of a sorry, of a capacitor half C V square, and then you know the L, you know the I. You can find out how much the energy will be stored from that. Agree? These are the basic concept unit. Now, what will happen now? There will be energy stored energy will be transferred from that supply when the battery voltage to this inductor you putting by having a diode you will transfer the energy from that uh, the, the battery to this inductor will store that the energy will store there if you need to we'll be using some other time time constant of the RL circuit is very simple that's the same thing L by R and you should be able to even do that now the third circuit we are looking for is the LC circuit you know that's it that's 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 your look what happened we're going to use a switch and a diode and what happened there what do you expect you got a V 
and an L and C. Look, please look at the derivation in the book there. You're going to see the current will be like a resonant in the, the sinusoidal circuit, half cycle there. And if the half cycle resonant there, you know, like a half circuit there, and then what will happen that the current will be a sine wave and then stop here because of the doubt. If you did not have the doubt, resonant oscillation will continue forever. The inductor will transfer an energy to this capacitor. Capacitor inductor is go forever there. It will be oscillatory circuit. But since we put a doubt that is going to stop there somewhere, half the cycle, okay, half the cycle, and then the capacitor voltage will start or zero, then it's going to charge, starts there. You're going to see that it's going to charge to twice the supply voltage. Like the battery was Vs, if there is 100 volts, that will go to 200 volts, the, the, the charge to this one. After about um, T1 will be a pi LC, the pi LC, the resonance circuit frequency of the half of the resonance frequency of that circuit or the time period. And that's what happened. You see the beauty of that, beauty of this having a power electronic, you can have a transfer energy from the supply to this capacitor and the capacitor will be charged twice, but the, how much the capacitor will be? Half C V square. How much is the V? You got a 2 V S square. That is the energy of a capacitor we're going to transfer and capacitor will store this energy there. And now the peak current of this, the circuit will be equal to, you can find out, I peak equal to V S by, I think C by L, something like that. That will come in a minute. Okay, you look through that one, there'll be peak current there. Agree? Now this is this the basic theory of the circuit and if you look through that and you can find out how much the diode will be conduct this will be pi and the pi times the LC. Okay. Let us look through the next circuit. They ask you the switch with the switch of the diode as shown close the final diode current what will be the final diode current? The final diode current will be zero because when that capacitor is fully charged will be 2 Vs 2 Vs, that was a Vs, now what is going to do? This capacitor will try to push energy back to the supply because you have a 2 Vs, you got a Vs, the diode will stop that, the diode will stop that, as a result there will be no current flowing through that, at the end there will be no final current will be zero, the capacitor will do 2 Vs, that's the answer is 2 zero there, and zero there. Let us look through that. Like switch inductor, can another one we look through that one. Uh, the switch of the inductor close, the initial DIDT, initial DIDT, what is the DIDT of the circuit? The DID again at the beginning, uh, the, the voltage across the capacitor will be zero. All the voltages will appear across the inductor. Because remember, the capacitor voltage will be equal to 1 over C. Uh, IDT. At the beginning there is no current, there is no voltage across the capacitor. All the voltages will appear across that uh, the, the, the inductor. That means the initial current will be Vs by L. Now we are looking for the peak current. What is the peak current? If you look through the book you can find out the peak current will be Vs C, 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 root square root of C by L. The example asks you if the 1 microfarad L is given there, the peak current of the will be 100 when there is, you know, when the switch is closed. If this is 100, you know, this, you know the C, sorry, you know the C, you know the L, you can find out how much Vs would be. Please do the calculation. Diode conduction time, how long this diode will conduct because you can find out that is the LC, you can find out, you know, what is the right answer will be the diode will conduct for them. The capacitor voltage, obviously in this capacitor voltage, the, the expression for the capacitor voltage is equal to 2 pi, but what happened that when you have that complete a half cycle, when you got a half cycle is basically pi, omega t is pi, cos omega t is a 1, minus 1, that means 1, 1 minus minus 1, it will be 2 Vs. That's what happened there. That means what will be the answer? The answer will be 2 Vs, right? This will be capacitor will be the 2 Vs. Now, resonant frequency. Resonant frequency is normally given by 1 over LC. Is the resonant frequency? Ask you if that capacitor is C, LC, what is the resonant frequency will be? Now, here is given by the kilohertz, but you know the frequency is equal to omega 0 by 2 pi. You know the radian, this is radian per second. If you want to convert to the hertz, uh, hertz, you have to divide it by 2 pi. That's why you should be able to calculate. Please do that calculation. Okay. Now, with the pre holing diode, that's very important to know that what happened there. We mentioned to you before, if you close this switch, 
if you close this switch, if you close this switch, the current will flow through the inductor, and then the, the inductor current will rise, and eventually current will go to the maximum. What is the maximum? Well, going to Vs by R is going to go there, and that's why the inductor current will rise to the maximum. Like when you close this switch, they go there, and the current will rise. It will go to the Vs by R, and if you keep it long enough time, and, and once it goes there, and once it goes there. Now, what happened then? At the end, you have the current Vs by Vs by R, you have that the inductor has some energy stored. Half the inductor has stored half L I square, whatever the peak value is reaches, then this inductor is stored there. Now, whenever you try to, whenever you try to turn off the switch, once you try to turn off the switch, what has happened? The inductor does not write. If you want to reduce the voltage across the inductor, by the way, L D I D T. Now we are trying to say that the current of the inductor should be less, fall. That means this will be negative value. That means the inductor will oppose that one and induce the voltage in opposite direction. That will create a voltage in opposite direction, like this inductor will create a voltage in opposite direction. As a result, this diode is going to conduct, and that conduct there, it create a free wheeling diode. That's what happened there. The current will rise, sorry, current will rise, and then stay there and current will fall exponentially. That's what happened. What is the current through the diode? This particular diode is called the freewheeling diode. It will remain there. Now, what happened there? If you don't turn on the switch again, and then the diode will freewheel forever. If you assume that the no, this is the ideal inductor, it has no resistance, the energy will be trapped into that forever. But in real life, there will be some resistance and the current will fall. Okay. And, and that's, that's the one to show you, that's the freewheeling action. It's freewheeling action is very important. Wherever there is some uh, inductor in a circuit, you turn on a voltage to, to DC, volt, DC current, you must provide a path for the inductor. Otherwise, inductor who is going to induce a voltage in opposite direction is going to destroy everything. Like if you do not have the diode, inductor will induce the voltage, very large voltage, because standing DIDT, it was a 10 amps, to zero, you are taking a 10 m to zero, and right away you are going to 10 m to to zero in it like a zero time. It will be infinite. It's going to infinite volts is going to destroy all the semiconductor devices. But it has to energy has to go some places. You cannot destroy the energy. The initial DIDT of this circuit is basically the R will be there. It will be dBs by R, Bs by uh, Bs by R, Bs by L. The switching period you can calculate it out. It ask you for the current to be continuous, uh, not less than the zero, the freewheeling uh, should be what? The, the period should be less than the time constant. You know, you should be um, the, the less than the time constant. And what happened that if you have this a time constant, if you have the time constant, and if you come back, right? If the time constant, if you want the continuous current, you have to make sure that you have enough time to do that, okay? If you make it, if you make it, if you make this, you know, the current will be falling. If the current time constant is uh, such that if you make it like a period, you, you go rise and stay there and fall there, and then it, it, it doesn't come back after one, then there will be discontinuous current. The switching period should be less than the load time constant. Whatever the load time constant of RL side, it should be less than that. So the switching period should be less than the time constant, so that it doesn't have enough time to become a zero. Okay, it, it don't allow it to come through. Like giving, I don't know. Then I say that if you if you want to make it like this, you want to make like this, so that this is the period, right? This is the time constant. You don't want to make sure that you don't want to make that it falls, falls, nothing there. You don't want to make that one. Agree? There's, you don't want to make you don't want to make it this one the period you don't want to be longer than you want to make the period uh, shorter then this is the free healing diode uh, when the switch is, is, is turned on the free healing diode will cause conducting previously they may remain on due to the reverse stigma yeah because if the current was flowing if this current was flowing through that and then when the free healing diode come when the free willing diode is conducting there, you turn on again. Remember, the diode is conducting. You turn on again. There may be current flow through there. The current will be flowing through there, and then it will take certain time uh, before it recovers. The current may be going the opposite direction. It may remain on for a while due to the reverse recovery time. 
if you put this one it will not be turned on right away because it will take time to do that function of the diode um, the function the, the like this particular diode what is the function of that it's really the diode and the one is simulate a switch there um, uh, the, uh, not essentially operation of the circuit does not doesn't you know, doesn't involve the operation of the circuit but it's simply uh, behave like you know just behave like a switch there but if you would be like this I mentioned to one of the example like if you have a capacitor with charging if you don't have this switch diode then the capacitor will charge opposite direction like if you got a LC circuit and if you don't have a diode this is going to the, the oscillation will continue forever it doesn't help this it doesn't help the the operation of this particular circuit but it just to uh, not essential but serves as a switch uh, energy stored in a capacitor we mentioned to you half cv square this is the energy uh, of the circuit uh, um, uh, after the switch of the circuit is closed for enough the energy stored in the capacitor is how much okay why there is a two there half half c 2 v s square how much is come there half c 4 v s square right and that one you come there two to two goes there c v square again this is the answer right um, and then uh, where did they go do I have another one I think that's the end of this end of this you know, the, 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 the review please review that the video for the math files uh, for the chapter 2 there are some walked out examples the review videos go through the walked out examples because then and also suggest strongly that you uh, do these numbers you know that some of the numbers are missing and do that I think that's the end of this review thank you